Once you have your design vetted to the point where you can start to envision how the course will be structured in the online environment, you should start the implementation process. I do need to caution you at this point. Don't try to get the design perfect, but rather get it to the point that it will be functional. You will find that as you start to implement your design, you will have to make revisions and adjustments. There are many factors that you need to take into account as you move from your design to the implementation. At minimum, you will need to consider where do the modules fit into the overall design or course map? How is your instructional design approach realized in the modules? Where are you sharing the main course outcome and related learning outcomes with your learners? How do your modules align outcomes, activities, and assessment? Are you balancing student-centered and teacher-led instruction? What is the scope or range of the instructor's role, whether it's a presenter, a facilitator, a coach, or mentor? Is the course blended or fully online? How are you introducing yourself and building the learning community? Have you created a balance of assessment of learning, assessment for learning, and assessment as learning? What is the ratio or percentage of synchronous to asynchronous collaboration? How are you facilitating your learners' engagement and collaboration? How will you address infrastructure, systems, and support needs and issues that the learners may face? There are many instructional or functional issues that the learning management system, what we commonly refer to as an LMS, or other digital sharing tools will present that will force you to make adjustments. Just consider this part of the process. Similarly, you will need to keep in mind the course will need to be continually adjusted the first few times that it is run. I found that my online courses really start to reach a point of flow by the second or third iteration. Most often, I'm taking things away that are necessary or adding a key idea, video, or bit of text that improves the flow. Don't be surprised by the fact that you may need to strip things away to increase the effectiveness of your course. More isn't always better. Over the years, I have learned to use a minimalist approach I now refer to as if I can just get them to do this, or if I could just get them to apply that, and so on, when I look at the flow of each sections of my design and course. I will be referring to this if I could just get them to perspective often. You also don't have to get the full course up before you share it with your peers or colleagues for review. Because I use a modular approach, I'll get the overview or start here section up and the first one or two modules. Once I have these modules developed, I start the sharing process to get feedback and I also arrange for usability testing. Do not discount the power of another set or sets of eyes. By the time you start putting together your resources or putting things into your LMS or whatever digital space you're using, you've more than likely been thinking about or working on these ideas for several weeks. You are so close to the material that you will often overlook small but significant details that other sets of eyes will catch. Using the, if I can just get them to perspective, I consider what is the minimum that I need to convey to help my learner and get them started. In most cases, this will include a welcome and overview video, instructor information, a link to the course handbook outline or syllabus, a link to the course outcomes or even the full three column table, a link to the course resources or text that the learners will need, a link to the schedule or pacing document, a link to announcements or other forums, a link to Zoom and other course meeting information. I try to keep my overview or start here section down to five to six items or links because any more than that, your learner may become overwhelmed. Depending on the platform I'm using or the organization I'm working with, I also prefer to point to these links rather than share the full documents because seeing five or six links on a page is less overwhelming than scrolling through entire pages of information. Research has shown that many people ignore step-by-step -step instructions, so I organize my information in a summary fashion or as links that can be viewed in any order. This will increase the likelihood that your students will review the information. I will be going into this in much greater detail in the implementation example, but I still want to provide an overview of the module structure that I found most effective. 
remember, I am still using the, if I could just get them to minimalist perspective when I set up my modules, which will once again include five to seven items, an overview video and the script, additional supporting videos that point to key ideas, discussion and collaboration opportunities and supporting videos and documents, the module activity to do or instructions, supporting document resources, links and submission details. Most of my subsequent modules will follow this format. Once again, I must stress the importance of not overwhelming your learner. If your LMS allows you to sh just show the top level of your module that can fit into one page and the student can click on those headings to expand uh, each of those items within the module, this is a very helpful design. It gives the learners some control over the process and not be overwhelmed with too much information. But what about all the other resources that you need to include in your course? Or for those students who want to go deeper, where do you put those things? Well, this is where I create a resources or a course tip section in my traditional courses, where I provide links to these additional resources that align with the course modules. In my PD style courses, I will call this a going deeper section, and it's usually at the end of each of the modules. I warn my students that while these resources are useful, they need to discern what they need to use to complete their learning activities. I will point my learners to what they need to do at minimum to successfully complete the learning opportunity, but also encourage them to go beyond the minimum and go much deeper. The key from an outcomes-based constructivist perspective is to give your learner the control over how far or how deep they need to go. Once you have the overview and the first module to complete, you'll need to create an implementation video which should incorporate a screen capture approach like Screencast-O-Matic or Camtasia, where the key components of your implementation are shared and fully narrated. The video can be uploaded to YouTube, Vimeo, or other media sharing system, and then you post and embed uh, this video and related resources on your blog or website. Look forward to the feedback you will receive and use it to make the necessary revisions to your course and its design.